namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa good morning everyone uh, today we are going to uh, discuss another interesting topic about the Pachupannas, but it is related to the Santatis, the generations. Uh, why I chose this topic at this juncture is because uh, when we are going to explain the Santati, the generations, it is necessary to know what sort of Santatis are found within the Theravada tradition. So the explanation of Santatis is clearly given under the topic of Pachupanna. You can see this uh, mainly under the Sammasana Jnana Katha of the Patisambhida Magga. Uh, so having uh, uh, gone through it, we can have a slight idea about what sort of generations are found in related to Rupa. Last time, yesterday we discussed that uh, the Rupas have four types of origins. That is Kamma, Chitta, Uttu and Ahara. Uttu refers to Tejo Dhatu, Ahara refers to Oja, the nutriment element. So Rupas arise out of these causes of origin of Rupa. Then based on these causes, the Rupa are classified into four groups as Kammaja, Kamma born matter, we can translate, uh, Chittaja Rupa, Chitta born matter, Utuja Rupa, Utu born matter, Aharaja Rupa, Ahara born matter, Nutrient born matter. Then uh, the Kalapas are also termed in the same manner, uh, Kalapas born out of Karma, Chitta, Uttu and Ahara. Then we have also have Santatis, the generations. But when we study the generations of Rupas, it's vital that we need to uh, understand how, what sort of uh, generations in generally uh, can be found within the Ther Theravada tradition. A generation means uh, a line of Rupas or uh, when Rupas after one after another, now when, when they happen in uh, in how do you call in in terms of uh, a linear uh, process is going on in terms of time we we call it a generation then uh, within the theravada tradition these generations the rupa uh, the existing rupas uh, over time are classified into we can look into a generation in three ways in three ways in terms of an entire life in terms of short periods of short periods of the time, periods of time, durations of time and also based on the cause that uh, originate, that brings up this uh, generation. So we will go into that topic now, uh, Santati, Rupa Santati, but the topic is given as pachu, four types of Pachupana, uh, but our main focus would be at uh, Santati, Santati. Pachupana. Pachupana refers to the present, the element, the realities that are present, that are, that are existing at the moment. But it doesn't mean that all the realities that exist can be called present, because to be called present, something to be called present, it has to come into arisen, arising. It has to come into arising, having not existed before, and uh, before it's vanishing. So if a reality which didn't exist before suddenly happens and passes away. So after the passing away reality is no more, before arising reality was no more. During this phase, while after it's arising and before it's passing away, any reality in this stage, in this uh, moment is called Pachupanna reality. Call a Pachupana reality. Then Pachupana Bhava means Pachupana. We also need to know a reality which is in the present moment, which, is, which has arisen but not passed away, is called a Pachupana reality, a present reality. Its nature, the presence, presence or the present nature. 
is called Pachupanna Bhava. Nature of being present. It means having come into the states of existence. The nature of being present. We also know that Nirvana is a reality, a state which do exist according to the tradition. It has been existing forever. But we don't go into call it a present reality since it doesn't have an arising. So something only which has arisen and not passed away yet, which is in this stage, has to be considered as a present reality. As Nirvana doesn't have an ar arising and it doesn't vanish, uh, we, even though it exists, we cannot call it present. So present reality is not equal to an existing reality. Every present reality is existing for sure. But not all existing realities are present. That's, a, that's another point that we have to keep in mind. Nirvana is existing, but it is not present. But every present reality, it means every Chitta, Chetisika and Rupa, which has come into the arising, which has passed this moment of arising, which has arisen, but not passed away, are present realities. That's also something we need to keep in mind. This presence, presence, the nature of being present, is quite important. Now, if something has come into this existence, having not been before, that, mo that state of that reality is called its presence, its presence. So, in the Theravada tradition, there are four ways that we can consider about this presence. Mainly, it is twofold as momentary present and then generational presence. Generational presence, momentary presence and generational presence. So momentary presence is the ultimate explanation of presence. Now, if something is we in Pali we call it kana pachupana, momentary. Generational presence is called santati pachupana. Kana pachupana bhava. Then santati pachupana bhava. Kana Pachupana Bhava is the existing of a reality in its momentary uh, life, the momentary lifespan. It means a consciousness would happen and pass away. During this momentary existence, the chitta is said to be in the Kana Pachupana, momentary presence. A rupa having not been before, arises and then it starts to decay and pass away after 17 mind moments. This entire existence is called the presence of a Rupa, the presence of a Rupa. So normally we normally draw it like, like this anyway, we shall discuss about this matter later. Uh, this is the momentary presence. So during his momentary existence, Realities are said to be in the momentary presence. And those realities are called momentary present realities. Momentarily present realities. So that's what it has been mentioned uh, in the handout. The generational presence, Santati Pachupanna, is threefold. As is threefold again as Santati Pachupanna. I'm not talking now. Here we are talking about the uh, Pachupana ba Okay, we can go into that Bhava, then presence, and then Adda Pachupana Bhava. Then Samaya Pachupana Bhava.
adha pachu panna samaya pachu panna so presents are talking so in way you have to you can apply it in the present reality as well santati pachu panna bhava means when a certain generation of realities have occurred due to a specific cause when a generalization is occurring due to a similar cause we consider it as a one generation for example now think about uh, the heat or coldness is producing a process of rupas this is the cause so all the rupas that occurred due to this cause are called a one generation a one generation sometimes a similar cause now rupas do occur due to certain causes similar cause the causes are also arising and passing away a similar cause keep on happening then generation continues so due to a similar cause when a generation is happening that is also called a one generation right one generation so this is the theory this is the basic theory under this santati either due to a one cause or due to many cause similar causes when a generation of rupa is happening we consider this as a santati which as is as a santati so we are talking about in general in general some santati some generations are happening for a certain period of time certain period we can explain we shall explain this some generations are happening throughout the entire life entire life some are happening like some generations we consider in this regard we don't need to worry about the causes some generations which are happening during a certain duration of time certain period of time so in all the three cases we are focusing at a generation so when we talk about the momentary presentness we are talking about a one reality or a one unit of realities chittupada or kalapa or even you can call about the chitta ma nama and rupa but they in in the actual sense they appear in clusters right chittupada and rupa kalapa but in generations now we always should keep in mind that generation has a beginning a generation has a beginning it also has an end so if we consider this is the end of the generation this is the beginning of the generation all the rupas within the generation as long as the generation is continuing for instance we are at this point we are at this point these rupas in the same generation has already passed away some rupas has not arisen yet but within the generation all the rupas in that generation has to be considered present we don't need to worry about the momentary presentness now if you think about the momentary presence of a rupa only this rupa when your point of consideration is here then only this is present remaining are not present if you think in terms of the momentary presence but if you think in terms of the generational presence the entire all the rupas within the same generation has to be considered present right so that's what we have to keep in mind when we think about the generational presence we have to take we have to take the entire generation as uh, as present realities all the realities in that in that generation any reality which occurred before that generation any reality which occurred before that generation and reality that would happen after the generation are considered respectively past and future respectively considered as past and future that is the a uh, basic explanation about the generational presence so the kanapachupanna momentary presentness is i think already explained a reality which has arisen but not passed away during its momentary existence it is called a present reality then we move on to uh, the three types of uh, generations santati pachupanna the same name can be used here don't get mixed up with that uh mixed up with that because santati pachupanna can refer to all the three at the same time the word santati is referred to a one type of generations as well right then uh, 
adda and samya so now we shall explain these terminologies these terminologies now we first go into uh, we know that there are four types of rupas kamaja kamaja rupa kamaja kalapa and kamaja santati generations of kamaja rupas chittaja chittaja rupa chittaja kalapa and chittaja santati and we also have utuja utuja rupa utuja kalapa and utuja santati then we have aharaja aharaja rupa aharaja kalapa and aharaja santati these are the four types of rupas and uh, their units are called four types of kalapas and their generations are called four types of santati right four types of santati then uh, now with regard to adda pachupan adda pachupana means realities that are existing within one life within one life so the beginning of this adda pachupana generation it's a generation has to be counted from the moment of rebirth this is the rebirth then realities keep on happening we think this happens for many years and now this is the death death now think about our life we were born some years back and we hopefully we will live for some years longer right <laughs> some years for for some years so during this entire period from our birth to death all the rupas that occurred during our course of existence in this very life have to be considered as one generation so that generation is called adha pachupanna which is called adha pachupanna santati adha pachupanna it can be applied to nama as well mentalities as well now think now we are here middle of our age now we are our present moment lots of rupas have passed away already and there is lots of rupas to arise in this life all of them including the present rupas that we are experiencing at the moment including them all the present and past rupas in this very life have to be considered as pachupana and there is one 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 generation there is one generation i shall be focusing on pachupana at the same time on the generation aspect because what matters to us is what types of generations are found regard to each rupa each type of rupa regard to each type of rupa now with regard to adha pachupanna now any rupa which occurred in the previous life previous lives and any rupa that would occur in future lives are not considered as pachupanna in this case here all the rupas in this life while all the rupas are considered pachupanna rupas which occur in past lives are called atita rupas which will happen in future lives are called anagata anagata a sutta which express about this no notion is the baddeka ratta sutta baddeka ratta sutta that sutta buddha mentions to contemplate on pachupanna realities the present realities pachupanna cha yodhamman tatta tatta vipassati according to the theravada explanations this pachupanna refers to any reality within this life it doesn't need to be any reality which is existing at that moment according to the theravada explanation so adha pachupanna is what has been considered according as as explained by venerable dhammapala in the dika nikaya sub commentary but the commentators have also emphasized it is possible to take the santati pachupana as well short existence short generations within one life is also possible so anyway when you read the sutta you find what the buddha is referring as the past rupa is the rupas 
or past dhammas, past realities are the realities which happen before this life. Future realities are the realities that are going to happen after this life. Present realities are the realities which are occurring in this life. Though they have already passed away, though they have not arisen yet, all the realities has to be considered as Pachupana. So what one is supposed to do, meditate regarding on these realities which are in the present life. But it's also possible now we can see uh, when we come to Vipassana meditation, there are sutras in Sangyutta Nikaya, Buddha suggests that you do meditation regarding the past lives and future lives, contemplate on these past and future lives and start meditating, uh, vip doing Vipassana because the commentator says for some yogis it is quite hard to contemplate on the realities of the present life as Anicca, Dukkha and Anatta because their attachment and their view is, attachment is very strong regarding the present life and they are grabbing or holding with uh, Ditti or Upadana is much stronger. So when you do uh, Vipassana on, upon these past and future realities, your Upadana would gradually lessen and then it would be easier for one to focus on the present realities of this life, realities of this present life. So this is, the, uh, in this Sutta you can find this concept of Adda Pachupana, uh, but the term is not there, uh, the concept can be found, the concept can be found. Then uh, we talk about the now four types of rupas, kamma generations, kammaja, chittaja, utuja and aharaja. Kammaja, chittaja, utuja and aharaja. Uh, I shall be explaining them uh, in when we come into those lessons, but uh, today is a rough idea. The main explanation, the main point is we should know what types of uh, uh, rupas, what types of generations are found with regard to each type of rupa. Then uh, Adda Pachupanna, one life. Now think about, now we take the Kammaja Rupas, Kammaja Santati. From the beginning of the life, Kammaja Santatis occur in us and that would continue in most of the cases till death. Right? Come, some Kammaja Santatis may happen after few weeks from our rebirth, like, like Chakku Pasada and so forth and some may pass away uh, due to some reasons before we die even if we lose our eyes and so forth. I mean, most of the cases, they all the Kamaj Rupas get uh, stops their processing uh, at the moment of death. And some Kamaj Rupas occur from the moment of rebirth. So now there are a few Kamaja processes. Now, for example, uh, uh, few Kamaja processes are happening within one life. For instance, I is a one process, the, the Chakupasada, sensi eye sensitivity is a one process, one generation. Ear sensitivity is another generation. So there are few Kamaja generations are occurring in our life, uh, even at this present moment. So all the Kamaja Rupas in a generation has to be considered as a one unit. So all the generations produced by Kamma have to be considered as a one generation, we call it Adda Pachupanna because the beginning and the end is marked by the rebirth and death, rebirth and death, except except few special locations and regarding some Kammaja Santatis like Chakku Sota Gana which occurs a bit later at the time, few weeks after the birth. So without considering that, we may say all the Kammaja Rupas all the Kamaja generations which occur between life and death have to be considered as one units, separate units. So they are, they are, they are called Adda Pachupanna Santati. Right? Adda. So their generation is throughout the entire life. Then Chittaja, Utuja, Aharaja. Uthichada, Utuja and Aharaja, these processes, we have various processes of them. They also do continue till death. So various types of Chittada, Utuja, Aharajas are happening collectively. Collectively, all sorts of Chittada, Utuja, Aharaja processes 
can be said as a one generation in a certain uh, under a certain context but when you come into when we come into the next topic santati pachupanna chittaja utuja and aharaja have been exclusively mentioned how their generations are happening but all the chittata utuja aharaja drop rupas which are happening within one life can also be taken as a one generation can also be taken as a one generation under one context it's not that much popular but still it is possible so uh, here the beginning and end is marked by the rebirth and the death rebirth and the death so this is the adda pachupanna i think i have given it in uh, page number 2 adda pachupanna uh, kammaja adda santati 2.1661 2.1661 kammaja adda santati and chittaja adda santati aharaja adda santati and utuja adda santati right this is the explanation but this is very vital kammaja adda santati then we move on to uh, santati pachupanna now this was adda pachupanna uh, santati pachupanna santati santati pachupana now think this was the rebirth this is the death this is the death so in between in between regarding chitta ja utu ja and ahara ja Utuja is the rupas produced by Tejo Dhatu. Tejo, we we get exposed to various Tejo Dhatus. We get exposed to various Tejo. Now think about that. You come into an air-conditioned room with air-con air-conditioned room, or you go into you go under sun. So time to time we get exposed to various Tejo Dhatus. So based on the nature of this Tejo Dhatu, that those Tejo Dhatus do cause some generations to happen in our body. so based on its nature based on the nature of this cause the generations can be classified generations can be classified for instance now give an example now there is an air conditioned room a person has been under was living under sun so so from while he was under sun in the in the outside so he had more certain type of utuja rupas happening due to this caused by this heat inside the room which is very cold there is an air con person goes in and what happens different type of utuja rupas to samage mutu starts to occur he feels we can obviously see a change in our body then after spending some time after spending time time in that room so here he went into the room just before he go into the room then having spent having spent some time in the room so he then moves out he then moves out now again he moves under the sun for instance now in this case now think that he was un- in the in the air conditioned room for 1 hour for instance he was there for 1 hour during that hour many chitta rupas ne no, sorry utuja rupas occurred in him all of them were caused by a similar sort of a cause because if the aircon was put into like 20 or 50 17 degrees celsius or whatever now similar tejo is attacking or getting having contact with our body causing generations to occur so all these generations all these rupas processes which are caused by a similar tejo dhatu have to be considered as a one generation so how long you stay in the room doesn't matter the time doesn't matter so then this entire process starting from the entrance of the entrance to the room and going out of the room 
this process, this generation is called Santati Pachupana, Utuja Santati Pachupana. Why was that? This Pachu process was caused by a similar type of a cause. Then outside, he get exposed to different Tejo Dhatu. So a new process starts to occur in him. So these are, this is the, another different Tejo uh, Utuja process. We, he had a different Utuja process. So it shows that within the one life, due to, due to being exposed to different Tejo Dhatus, different types of Tejo Dhatus, we get different types of Utuja generations, Utuja generations. So based on the cause, we name these generations as a one unit. We need to call it as a one unit. So Utuja Rupas, for example, within a one life, Due to different causes, we can have different types of generations. Generations, unlike the Kamaja process. Kamaja is the reason for we we don't include Kamaja uh, Santati Pachupana in Kamaja Rupas because in a one life, a one generation, one Kamaja generation. For example, think about the eye. We, we I, I shall dis explain them in detail from next week, what, what are these processes, what are the Kamaja generation and so forth. But I want to emphasize is, within a one life, if you think about one generation, a certain specific generation, for instance, Chakupasada generation, the eye sensitivity generation, is caused by one single Kama, not by various Kamas. But with regard to Utuja, as we get exposed to various Utus, as we get exposed to various Utu, Utu, Utu like the Tejo Dhatu, we get different type, we can experience different types of generations, different type of Utuja generations happening in ourselves, in our lives. So, so if someone happens to live in his entire life in under same conditions, maybe like an Eskimo who, who lives in, 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 in snow his entire life, maybe uh, the entire process of Utuja Santati may be one, but that's, that's a very, very rare occasion because we get exposed to various uh, weather conditions. Uh, so therefore, based on the condition, based on the cause, the generation is classified. The same to be applied with the Aharaja processes because we take, now we partake food in the morning. So it causes some Uttuja Rup, uh, Aharaja Rupas to occur in our body and strengthens our body, energizes our body. After some times that effect is seen like the effect uh, we can see the effect is lessening and we, we may start to feel weakness in the body and while we take another uh, meal of food we get uh, we get energized again so based on the meals that we take we can see various aharaja generations aharaja generations and that also when we when we have some food for example very rich food uh, some something like very uh, gives you a lot of energy and the Aharaja processes can be seen, different Aharaja processes can be seen. So, it's the same way as Utuja processes, Aharaja processes also, based on the meals that we have, we may get different processes. That is Utuja Santati and Aharaja Santati mainly due to the nature of the cause. Then with regard to Chittaja, we call it Viti Chittaja Sansati. Viti Chittaja. Now, another important factor is, there are mind processes. We haven't discussed about them yet. Now, mind exists in the Bhavanga process and then certain minds arises in our mind stream. Then it falls back into Bhavanga and this, this phenomenon keeps on happening. While these mind processes are working, we get certain rupas as a result of these minds. And during the Bhavanga process as well, we get certain rupas occurring.
these rupas which occurred by which are caused by one single mind process caused by a single mind process is called a one unit all the rupas caused by a single mind process viti are considered as a one unit so this is a one generation and this the, the rupa caused by another process is another generation is another generation so likewise as long as process uh, chittaja uh, vitis the mind processes are occurring parallel to them some material processes are also happening so these material processes with regard to their origin with regard to the cause of origin that is the viti process viti chitta chittas that happen in these mind processes are considered as separate units so this is a one unit one santati generation of the chittaja process so chittaja processes are considered based on the vitis of the mind based on the mind processes utuja santatis are based on the nature of the utu nature of the tejo dhatu aharaja santati are based on the nature of the food that we partake so within the now this was the entire life within one life we can find various chittaja chittaja santati we can find various utuja santati we can find various aharaja santatis so within one life various generations caused by chitta utu and ahara can be found but with regard to karma with regard to karma we can find only one generation right a uh, one stream of generation with regard to each process now there are nine pro eight processes happening in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a one single body because we don't have both sex in one body uh, so for example the process of the eye eye sensitivity process of the ear sensitivity process of the nose sensitivity and so forth so a one process is happening as it can have to be considered as a one unit throughout the entire life that is called adda pachupana within a one life owing to the uh, mind processes we get a one sort of a different rupa generation material generation based on different mind processes and based on the different uh, tejo dhatus to which we get exposed we have uh, different utuja processes and based on the food that we partake we have different aharaja processes so this is the difference so therefore normally in the theravada tradition kamaja processes are not consider in the in these types of short generations we can call them short generations this is the long generation which lasts for the entire life which we discussed in the previous page right kamaja san kamaja generation can be found in the entire life this was a special occasion chitta da utuja aharaja in the entire life it is found in uh, in the vipassana practice so that's why i included it but we don't need to focus much on that kamaja processes are found taken as Uh, one unit throughout the entire entire life but with regard to utuja chitta jana haraja we can find small generations as well now regarding kamaja is a special special way of considering how whether can can they be considered as short generations yes now another fact is kamaja rupas kamaja kalapas in our body do support the other rupas we which we will be discussing in future lectures how their support is given kamaja rupas in the body do support chittaja utuja and aharaja rupas and processes now think this was a aharaja process a kamaja process which is happening as a one process throughout the entire life is supporting this this process this aharaja this ahara short aharaja process so the rupas which supported shall draw it rupas which supported this aharaja process this is our one aharaja process and the rupa kamaj rupas which supported this aharaja process can also be taken as a one unit based on what based on the process which it supported based on the process but in the ultimate sense 
the entire Kambaja process is a one process throughout the entire life. But how they are supporting this, the based on the uh, based on the uh, nature of the uh, short process it supports. So based on its duration, if this these Kamaj Rupas are supporting the second Aharja process, second Aharja process, these are considered as another short process. There is a one way and one way of considering that can be applied in the vipassana practice. In the vipassana practice, another way to consider about the Kamaja short processes is due to the change of sex happening within one life. Now, sometimes a person, a male may turn into a female or a female may turn into a male. During that time, now entire, I shall draw it in, a, in another page. Now, this is the rebirth. Now, think about this is the bhava process, kambaja, bhava process. Bhava means bhava santati, the, the bhava rupa, the element of sex, the material of which, which determines our sex. Uh, is happening in processes due to a karma. Now, during a, now this is if if you consider this is a male. At a certain time, he changes into a female. So the bhava rupa, the nature of the bhava rupa changes. Nature of the bhava rupa changes. But according to the tradition, one process is caused by a one karma. One kamaja process is caused by a one karma. That is unanimously accepted theory within the Theravada tradition. So, what has made this, the difference of the process is caused by effecting this karma. Some other karma has effected this, this karma which causes the process. It's a female. Bhavarupa. Now, after, yeah, better draw it. Differently. Now, Kama is producing the entire process. The Kama, which, pro, which produces male Bhava Rupas, have changed due to being affected. It has been affected by some other Karma. So, that nature of the Karma is slightly different. It's the same Karma, but which has been affected. Which has been affected. Therefore, due to the change of the karma which causes, the Kamaj Rupas are also these two types of Kamaj Rupas, like two qualities, uh, Kamaj Rupas which, uh, which had a change, are considered as two separate units. Two separate units. So, the ultimate sense this is a one generation because it's, it's during the entire life, Kamaj Rupa process are taken as a one generation. But as the Kamma have a slightly, diff, slightly affected by some other Karma, this is considered as a, these two phases are considered as two different separate units. There's another way that we can consider Santati Pachupana within Kamaj Rupas, right? So, how the Kamaj Rupas affect a certain Aharaja Chittada Utuja Santati and also during this change of sex, the, uh, the difference in the process. Also, uh, we can, due to that also, we can uh, classify Kamaj Rupas uh, into short processes, right? So, this is the explanation. Uh, with regard to Viti Chittas, then someone can ask a question, what happens to Viti Mutta Chittas, the Bhavanga, uh, the Rupas that are produced by Bhavanga process, Bhavanga Chittas, Within the tradition, we don't recognize it as Santati Pachupanna. Uh, Lady Sado suggests that the Bhavanga processes is considered as a one process. So it seems like it is maybe they are considered, they are also similar to a one entire life process like Adda Pachupanna, but we cannot uh, verify it yet. So that's why I have given. It seems like the short process, the, uh, the Rupa that is happening due to Bhavanga is not considered as, are not considered as uh, short processes within the tradition. Then the last fourth, th for last type of uh, uh, pachup, uh, process is Samaya Pachupanna. Samaya Pachupanna. Samaya Pachupanna means we take a duration of time, for instance, the entire day morning from dawn to noon, then we have 
mid day for example uh, 6 to 10 10 to 2 something like that then afternoon including evening rupas whatever rupas kamaja chittaja utuja aharaja which are occurring all sort of rupas which are occurring during a session during a session is considered as a one generation so this is a one generation this is another generation this is another generation that's based on the time it's easy to understand so the message in this lecture is now we have three types of pachupanna we we discuss about three types of four types of pachupanna kana pachupanna is the momentary existence which we didn't into uh, which is obvious which is clear now generation pachupanna santati adda and samaya pachupannas Sant, uh, adda pachupanna is mainly the generation which is happening throughout the entire life Kamaj, the point is, Kamaj Rupa generations are Adda Pachupana generations. So, generations made by Kamaj Rupa has to be taken, the beginning and end has to be considered by the beginning and end of our life. So, processes of Kamaj, Kamaj Santatis are happening throughout the one, uh, same process is happening throughout the entire life, and we have to take all the Kamaj Rupas within that life as a one unit as a one unit but with regard to chittaja utuja and aharaja so the, uh, even though chitta utuja and aharaja can also be found entire life throughout the entire life we don't need to focus on this our emphasis on this kamaja rupas are adda pachupanna kamaja is adda pachupanna but with regard to chittada utuja and aharaja santati pachupanna short processes are, can be found short generations can be found with regard to kamaja we don't consider there is a special way that we can consider, but we can exclude it. We don't need to worry about that. We are not going to talk about this in this lesson. That Those explanations are rele relevant to Vipassana practice, not to the studies of Abhidhamma. Right? So, Chittaja, Utuja and Aharaja processes, we can find short processes within one life. Kammaja, there is no such a short process. It is a one process throughout the entire life. That is the message that I want to give you. But I gave a lot of information, maybe it, it caused you confu confusion because some, as, as some is interested in uh, further studies, I just wanted to give you an ex explanation, uh, idea on how the pro processes are, are explained within the tradition. And when we come to the Vipassana lectures, we shall, we shall surely talk about them, how to contemplate. So, Kamaja is Adda Pachupanna, Chittaja Utuja Aharaja are can be found as Santati Pachupanna. Samaya Pachupanna is also related to our practice when we contemplate the Rupas in the morning, passed away without moving into the midday, Rupas in the midday, passed away without moving into the um, afternoon and night and so forth. So the takeaway of this uh, lecture is with regard to Santati, Kamaja Santati is Adda Pachupanna. Adda Pachupanna Santati. You can call Adda Pachupanna. Or oh, Adda Santati is much better. We can use Adda Santati. Then Chittaja, Utuja, and Aharaja are just Santati Pachupanna. Santati, short, short ones. This is the entire one life. So when we come into the lessons of Kamaja Rupa, Utuja Rupa, Ahara Rupa, when I talk about the Santati, Kamaja Santati, I am referring to a process which lasts to the end, throughout the entire life. When you talk about Chittaja, Utuja, Ahara Santatis, we are talking about short processes, short generations. So, but within the tradition, there are many ways that it can be explained. So, how does this uh, explanation support our practice, for instance? Now, think about Kamaja, when you are doing Vipassana practice, rising and falling in your contemplation. So, according to the Theravada tradition, think about Kamaja Rupas. So, all the Kamaja Rupas within a one process, within this process has to be taken as a one unit. So you are not supposed, you don't need to focus on the momentary rising and falling away of Kamaj Rupas. So in the 
Udevaya, Udevaya Jnana has seen the rising and falling, rising of Kamaja Rupas happened at the moment of birth, moment of rebirth, or whenever the Kamaja process started in the mother's womb. Then its passing away is at the moment of death. So this is the rising and falling of Kamaja Rupas according to the tradition. Rising and falling. So when you contemplate, when you meditate, when you contemplate the Kamaja Rupas arose at the moment of rebirth and it passes away at the moment of death, this is considered as contemplating Udayabhaya in Kamaja Rupas. We are not supposed to, not necessary to focus on rising and falling on e of Kamaja Rupas at each moment. Then when we rega with regard to the Vipassana in Chittaja Rupas, what we are supposed to do is see the rising happening of Chittaja process at the beginning of a mind process, contemplating and contemplating their passing away at the end of a one mind process. So this is the rising, so we have to take it as a one reality, you have to take it as a one reality. Then for instance, Utuja Rupas, you go into an air conditioned room after being, say, being in the uh, hot weather like, like in IIT. <laughs> so when you are in the uh, uh, when you are in an air conditioned room for for instance we, are, we have been here for one hour now all the utuja rupas which occurred while we are in the room has to be taken as a one one reality so this is the rising rising of this reality occurred when you enter the room they passed away when you go outside the room so if you can contemplate on these realities as one unit that is enough for your vipassana practice and even for autuja aharaja aharaja also having taken a meal how the how the energy energy occurs and it disappears after some time and then with regard to samaya uh, time the rupas occurring at the morning happening at the morning and passing away before midday. So we have to consider them as a one unit. So this is also applied to uh, vipassana, uh, contemplating the vipassana, uh, we contemplating the namas. For instance, now think someone has contemplated utuda processes. Someone has contemplated utuja processes, uh, rising and falling, as explained by the tradition. Now this is done by consciousness. Now, if you draw consciousness like this, so there is a uh, focusing on uh, rup, nama, rupas. This is the vipassana period. So before the vipassana, he had ordinary minds. After vipassana, also he has some ordinary minds. Now, what happens with these mind? He contemplate the anicca, dukkha, and anatta of the rupa. This is rupa. This is nama is vipassana chittas. So after contemplating, after finishing the contemplation on rupa, if we contem if, if this is also a vipo for example, this vipassana done on nama, the, with these chittas, he contemplate on this nama. So what is the rising and falling of the vipassana chitta? When he began the contemplation on rupa, he began the contemplation of rupa, chitta arose. And when he ended the contemplation of rupa, Chitta vanish. So all the chittas in this process have to be taken as a one unit. You don't need to focus on each and every chitta. You can just con contemplate chittas while I contemplate while the, while I contemplated on rupa, that chitta arose and passed away. It's arising is the beginning of your contemplation and is passing away in the ending of your contemplation. So likewise. This generational aspect is very vital in Vipassana tradition. Most people do not focus on this, on, on this aspect. In some traditions, they, some methods, they do uh, encourage us to practice like that. But in most the cases, some are used to focus on the object that they encounter at the present moment. But when you go into the uh, Vipassana teachings, as explained by the uh, ancient commentators and the tradition, this is how, this is another way the person has been so even you focus on the present object that you encounter it's not a problem it's not a problem at all uh, but uh, the the explanation ex, uh, the, the, the vipassana explanations within the tradition says focus on these generations 
So with regard to Kamaja, generation is the entire life. So we, we are never going to experience the rising and falling of Kamaja Rupas at that moment because birth has already happened, death has not yet come. So we are con contemplating the rising and falling of Kamaja Rupas uh, uh, with our, uh, one can say imagination, it's a sort of a contemplation. Then with regard to Chitta Jauta Janaharja, you can focus on short uh, generations. And then when we come into the Vipassana practice, we will later get to know that you don't need to be in that moment to contemplate some uh, rupas. For instance, if you want to focus on the rupas during the morning, you don't need to be in the morning to contemplate anicca of the rupas in the morning. Even you can do it at night. So it's just a contemplation in the end. So when you come into the Vipassana practice, this explanation has to be explained a bit differently that how based on our con consideration. But when it comes to Abhidhamma or, or the fundamental teachings, uh, because we are not focusing on Vipassana at the moment, uh, when we come to the fundamental explanations, Pachupanna means some uh, generation which is still happening. Generation which is still happening. So all the Rupas within that generation has to be considered as Pachupanna. So the main message is the generations. With regard to Kamaja Rupas, the generation throughout the entire life is taken as one unit with regard to Utuja Chitta and Aharaja, short time generations can be found based on the causes that cause these generations. Yeah. So that is the, and it also shows that impermanence of the life because it's not a one stream that is happening. Chitta, Utuja, Aharaja, Rupas are changing time to time, uh, even within one life. And our Kamaja processes are changing from life to life and also it is caused by a certain certain karma which is so it, they become conditioned realities all these explanations gives you more insight into the vipassana practice yeah, i conclude the lecture uh, next week i will be starting about the kamaja rupas so keep in mind whenever i come into the kamaja santatis i'm talking about a process that exists for the entire life when i come to the chittaja utuja and aharja santatis in those lectures we are talking about short processes within one life yeah conclude i'll conclude the lecture Open in the forum for the Q&A session. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you very much. Okay, so, uh, so uh, hello everyone. Just like the usual, if you have any question, you can raise your hand or you can put the question in the chat box. Yeah, hi, Pandi. I have uh, see, uh, two questions. Yes. Uh, the first question is about the yeah, right. So I mean, you, okay. So even though that you said that the focus is on the Kamaja Rupa, not the Chittaja, Uduja, and Aharaja, but you also that you know we can also relate to the uh, Chittaja, Uduja, and Aharaja as well. And then in the the definition, you said that for the Adha Pachupana, then the the starting point is at the Patisandhi, and the end point is at the Juti Chitta. But we know that for Chittaja, Uduja, and Aharaja, they are going to continue. System in a little bit after the, the duty check. That's so how we're going to. Yeah, the, so the, uh, that will that'll, that'll exist for a short moment. For for example, uh, Chittaja and Aharaja, we can, uh, it will exist for another uh, few mind moments. Utuja Rupas may exist uh, uh, even after we have died, even after we have died. For that, uh, what have, uh, to my understanding, uh, we consider is that. Uh, the moment of death, moment of death, we can consider it as a, it as a one process has stopped. So, because uh, we can differentiate upadinnaka and anupadinnaka, for example, upadinnaka and anupadinnaka, we will come into that point uh, in this lecture series as well. Uh, even though the utuja rupa is continuing after death, after death is considered as anupadinnaka. Before death, it is considered as upadinnaka. So as, as the, so here in this explanation, what we are considering arising at the moment of birth, moment of birth or just one or two mind moments after the birth, and at the moment of death, it loses its upadinaka status. So this would be the rising and falling of Uttujarupas. But as you said, uh, if we consider deeply as Uttujarupas, we have to consider till that Uttujarupa ends after getting uh, into dust or after it has been burnt. Uh, there are some contemplations like that, especially when you go into uh, Satipatthana Sutta, uh, this contemplation, 
like Adi Navanupasana, that how your Utuja Rupas decay after death and uh, completely vanishes, like uh, when it, till it comes to the uh, dust and all, the contemplation can be found. So, uh, there are two ways. Uh, the moment you lose the Upadinaka status, is considered as the passing away of Utuja Rupas, or otherwise, as you said, you have to consider till the end of the process. Chittaja and Aharaja would last just few process, few mind moments after the death. Uh, so that we have to, uh, uh, like when I say the Chutti, you have to go till that few mind moments. Like it is, it is a short period. Like, like uh, for instance, uh, Chakku Pasada arises after few weeks from the rebirth. But we normally, normally say Kamaja processes start us from the rebirth. So we just uh, don't consider about that short period of time. So likewise, Chittaja and Utu Aharaja, we have to exclude that short period. But with regard to Utuja, uh, we can have two ways. Uh, when it loses the Upadinaka status and when it completely vanishes, as vanishes in, into dust or when it is been burnt. I see. Thank you, Paddy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And the second question is about the Utuja Santati Pachupanna. Mm. Right, so you gave us examples of the uh, maybe two different processes, and it depends on the sudden change in the nature of the Dhatu. But let's say for the sake of uh, trying to understand it, then what if you have a situation where we have a gradually change in temperature? Mm. And how are we going to understand that? Maybe? Yes, that's another very good question. Uh, I think. Uh, it would not be easy to give a Abhidhamma explanation on this, what is the gradual change, how to determine that gradual changing. So what uh, the commentators have given is, due to change of Uttu, we change the processes. Due to Sabhaga Uttu, Visabhaga Uttu, that's what they are giving, as I remember. So similar and dissimilar Uttu. So if a gradual changing is happening, uh, I think uh, we can, uh, because this will be related to vipassana practice in the end. When we are completely on vipassana, we can have our own uh, line of margin how to consider uh, uttu is completely changed or not. Now, as you said, uh, someone when the air condition is in Celsius 7, 16 and then is moved to 17, so it's a very slight change. You don't see much difference in it. So, in such cases, uh, it depends on the person uh, how to decide. Uh, whether it's to be considered as a process or not, as I consider, because no such explanation has been given uh, to your question, how, how do we consider if a gradual changing is happening, from which point we consider the process is stopped. I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, but and then the, the next question is, uh, do we get Kamacha Pachaya Uttu Rupa as the Pavutti Vipaka. Kamma Pachaya Uttu. As Kamma Pachaya Uttu Rupa as the Pavutti Vipaka. Uh, with regard to uh, linear causation or collective causation? I think he's talking about collective. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, but that is just a question uh, by the audience. Yeah, yeah, collective, collective, collective causation can. We can get it as a pavati, yes. For example, in some cases, uh, there can be uh, some rupas have occurred according to the literature due to the karma. Some strange phenomenon has happened due to the karma, uh, to the karma of the being. So, during the pavati, as a pavati vipaka, I think he's referring to the a uh, collective uh, causation because the divine, uh, like the divine mansions, which were a result of karma, yes, it can happen during the pavati as well, according to the literature. Thank you, Pandi. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Because there are many stories like that, many stories, and it can even happen to deities as well. It can happen to deities as well. I hope uh, Please, someone would get it. <laughs> yeah. uh, good morning, Pandi. Good morning, Sally. Yeah, I have a few questions. Okay. So the first one regarding the Santari Pajupana. Yes. Uh, the, in the Parajika Atagata Worm 2, it mentions Sata Tajamana Waramatam Sabaka Santari Vase Namavati Vaniru Jamatam. So, why do we mention the Sata Tajamana? Sata Tajamana. Huh? Sata Tajamana. Yeah. Yes, the 7 or 8. Sata Tajamana Waramatam. 
Oh, oh that is uh, that is another way of consideration, Sally. Now, now there is another type of santhiti Pachupanna explained in the commentaries, which I didn't bring here. Uh, Sattatta Javanavara means seven, eight mind processes, not eight Javana Chitta. Seven, eight mind processes. Now, someone uh, sometimes some teachers consider another way of Santati Pachupanna, another way of Sankarni Santati Pachupanna. Thank you for bringing that issue. Uh, now, for instance, uh, uh, something happens at a, at, a, at a certain point, some rupas or something happens at a certain point. Then, uh, how to consider something as a Santati Pachupanna? We can we take seven, eight mind processes. Now these four, five, uh, six, seven, eight. So all the rupas or chittas in this process have to be considered as santati pachupana. So satatta means mind processes. Satatta javanavara. Javanavara is a one mind process. Satatta javanavara means seven no eight mind process. Now this another simile is for example, uh, someone enters into a room uh, from, from uh, being staying under sun. So as long as soon as he enters the room, you know that our, our eyes, uh, we, we go, don't get a very clear vision, right? Everything becomes black out for a for, for few, few seconds. So after some time, we then get the, if you suddenly enter the room from being under sun, so such a, such a phenomenon is uh, visible, uh, happening. So it takes some time for us to get a clear vision. So that period is also considered as a period of Santati Pachupanna. So likewise, in, even in Dhammasangani commentary, we can find this explanation. Uh, there is another way of contemplating on Santati Pachupanna. Another way, it's, it's very similar to Samaya Pachupanna. It's very similar to Samaya Pachupanna. So they have uh, taken a very short period of time and consider all the all the Rupa and Nama in that process as Samaya, as Santati Pachupanna. Okay, thank you, Pandit. So my next question is regarding the, like, uh, we talk about the Udu Jai. You said that they have belong to the Sandadi, right? Yeah. Uh, in our own experience, for example, if we stay in, for example, you stay in Sri Lanka for, for a long time already. Okay. But if you uh, go to another place which is cold, so it, not, not so cold, but just a little bit cold, a uh, little bit colder than Sri Lanka, but if you're so cold, our body will be so cold. But actually, for local people, for, for, for the people who stay there, they do not feel cold. But for you, you will feel cold, right? But even you already stay there for one week or 10 days or one month, you still have that type of feeling. So that, that, that's the that is how can we see the somebody? Uh, that is, I think, uh, that is regarding your subjective experience. Like how to give an Abhidharma explanation on this. Now we have two types of Uttu Jarupas, the Ko Uttu of our body, Ko Uttu, the Ko essence, and the Rupas that happen due to being while in contact with Uttu Jarupas. So for example, a person in a top, tropical country, his Ko is more used to some heat and he gets the sensation. Now he, he, when he is exposed to heat, he can bear it, but uh, even a slight increase of the uh, coldness or uh, cool uh, coolness he may feel it bit uh, strange he may feel it difficult to uh, bear it so the people in other countries uh, far north and uh, far north and south their core is used to such a coldness uh, so they, they 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 can bear it they can feel make, bear that bear that feeling so due to that when we go in because the difference of a core ko utujarupa is not used to such environments. Then as we go, we may experience new Uttujarupas happening in our body and we can feel it. But regardless, according to, it's a, it's a very nice question, according to this uh, explanation, what I feel is, what I, what I feel is, even, even if we don't feel it, even if we don't feel it, if uh, the Uttuja in Sri Lanka and Uttuja in a, in a far north country uh, Utu in Utu, the Tejo Dato in a far north country and Utu in Sri Lanka are slightly different. 
Therefore, even though whether we feel it or not, whether we are unconscious or whether we are at sleep, still the Utuja, rup, the Utuja Santati is different. While we, while, when I go into an uh, uh, area where, is, where it snows, uh, Utuja Santati, a different Utuja Santati is happening, even though I, I don't feel it or I have some problems in feeling it. So, uh, regardless of our feeling, if the Utu is different, the causal Utu is different, we have to consider as a different Santati. Uh, so the next one is uh, you talk about the transformation of the, the bawas, in bawa and the bumbu bawa. Right. So, uh, uh, from my understanding, I think among the four causes, so what I observe like in Thailand, so I feel the Aharaja Rupa is the most important. Why? Why, why I say like that? It's because uh, for a child, he wants to become a female, so since since his childhood, he has a he has to take a medicine to to uh, to transfer like uh, the the hormone hormone system. So when when he accumulate uh, much money when he become adult, so he can change the gender. Even after changing the gender, he has to take a medicine again to maintain that hormone system. So that's why I, I found upon the four causes that Ahara Jaruba is most important. Yeah, it's it's another good point. Like uh, I'm not I'm not uh, very good at knowledge in the change of gender, how the process is happening, and I think there should be some operation even, right? If you want to make a yeah, the make operation a purpose is not the most important, but the, 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 of course the, you need to do the operation. Yes, but you maintain the hormone systems or everything that the medicine is the most important. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we take medicine, yes, Ahara Jarupa is also affecting. Now also Utuja Rupa, the, the, the food that we take transforms into uh, body parts, uh, parts of our body. So Utuja Rupas are also playing a huge role when you are taking medicine and also the Ahara Jarupas. Uh, here what we are talking, Siale, about, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, natural transformation. I think you are aware that some, some beings go undergo uh, uh, transgender, natural transgender is there, like uh, naturally they turn into males and females, even without they are, they are giving any, uh, like they are making an effort to be a male or a female. So I think in Buddhism what they are talking is the natural process of transgender, uh, not the uh, artificial like forced process. Uh, so in this regard, they are, for example, uh, the, some Myanmar Sayadus in, in, in Vinaya who, are, who, who, who teach Vinaya are considering even if someone uh, makes a, an operation and changes the gender, uh, there's a question which arises is, uh, now if I frankly say uh, a monk having sex with a uh, person who has a male who has turned into a female. So, uh, he, he has the uh, uh, female sex organ, so when he have the intercourse, whether he commits parajika or not, because uh, it has to be the female sex organ that the penetration should happen. Otherwise, if the penetration of the male uh, organ goes into a different uh, area, not into the female sex organ, it's not a considered as parajika. It's a grave os offense, uh, very grave offense, but not to the level of parajika. So, so the question which was given in an exam was: uh, if such a thing happens, uh, does the monk commit parajika? So the teacher's answer uh, was no, because it's not a, uh, it's, it has not happened under a natural process. I don't know. That's 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 how the answer was given. This is the idea, opinion of some teachers. So, according to them, according to this Myanmar Seado, uh, I think it was it was it was given in Yuama Pariyati Center. The question was given. Uh, according to these Seados, uh, they consider the change of the bhava happens due to a natural process, not with an artificial uh, transformation. And so this is what they believe. I'm not. I'm not giving any comment on this, whether whether I accept it or not, because I'm also a bit confused on that topic. Uh, so yes. 
So as you said, if we consider that the artificial transformation is also affecting the bhava rupa, is affecting the bhava rupa, as you said, food taken plays a huge role and op also operation makes a huge role. Then, but uh, with regard to those seados, uh, it has to have be, is to, is, is has to be a natural process uh, which the kamma is affected and he or she undergoes the uh, sex change. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's how, how I would like to, how, how I would like to answer that question. Okay, thank you so much, mm. Pandesa. Mm. Thank you, Pandesa, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. And I'm sorry, I have like a follow-up question yeah, sure, sure. on that. Sure. Um, so, but then how can we, as, as what you, you explained, but the, according to the Myanmar Sagi laws, then this looks like their viewpoint is that the, uh, the operation and non-natural way to change set doesn't result in the change in the Bawa Rupa. Yes, right? yes. So, so, so the, does, does that mean that the the, you know the uh, the food we taking or the, the the medicine we taking it, it it's not going to change the bawa rupa either according to them yes according to them yes uh, it has uh, due to the artificial transformation the bawa rupa has changed uh, then we have to consider there is an effect but uh, according to those shadows because they can, they don't consider they say that uh, having sex with such a woman is not committing parajika if he enters into the uh, how to say the female sex organ because it's not a female sex organ in the in the natural sense according to them so uh, therefore uh, according to them no yes I see. okay thank you Bandi. Sorry, sorry, sorry. and the next question is Bandi, um, is our breath considered utucha rupa or kamacha rupa if it is utucha which means it has momentary short and if it is Kamaja Rupa, then how do we reconcile it, these momentary breaths, breathing in and out, to com contemplating Anapanasati as one whole period of lifetime? Mm, it's true. So, uh, thank you for that question. According to the tradition, according to the tradition, Anapana is Chittaja. Anapana is Chittaja. So, but personally what I feel is anapana is utuja, uh, the breath we take in is utuja because if there is poison outside, po poisonous gas, when you inhale we die. But obviously, the what is outside is coming inside. So, outside is utuja rupa. So, when it enters, it affects the body and the what goes out is also utuja. So, uh, that's how I personally feel about it. There is a lot of controversies about utuja, uh, this breathing. I shall explain this into, I shall give a separate day to explain about this breathing, which are very interesting topics regarding Chitta uh, uh, So, if it is Utuja, for example, if it is Chitta, there can be a lot of questions. Uh, so, I shall, I shall leave it apart. If it is Utuja, I will take that point. If it is Utuja, we can still take the momentary uh, processes. Like, we do not need to take the Anapana as a one process because you inhale and exhale. So, you can take it as a one process or even inhaling is a one one short generation exhaling is another short generation uh, so then it does match that utuja processes are happening uh, but then whether we can apply it into santati pachupanna is another question because santati pachupanna is uh, the effects that you get with similar tejo with sim same or similar tejo so mostly similar tejo so uh, we can apply it in this way. Now, Utuja Rupa is entering into our body, does affect our blood and the entire system. So, uh, if we keep on breathing similar sort of air, similar sort of air, the Utuja Rupa processes which are occurring due to these uh, air should be taken as a one, one process. But if you move into another atmosphere, uh, smelly atmosphere or a unhealthy from a town to village, village to a town because we know the contemplation is quite different of the air. So, in such cases we can see a new process are occurring while we are breathing uh, newly. So, either we take one breath as a one process or we can take uh, while we are in a similar atmosphere all the breaths, the, uh, the rupas which are affected, rupa which, rupas which are affecting the body as a one 
process because uh, what we take in uh, then another question comes now the uh, the air we take in air we take in to our body even though we take it from outside after it, ent after it enters into our body it has to be considered as ajatta rupa during that moment it is considered as ajatta rupa during that moment short period uh, therefore that entire uttu while it is inside the body can be taken as a as a one process while it is going in and while it is coming out during this period but we can see it is slightly different because it reacts with the uh, blood uh, so oh, it is another way of considering otherwise change of the atmosphere then this this uh, air enters and it affects the entire body it affects the blood of the body so the new utuja processes are happening due to this air going in so these utuja processes can be taken as new generations uh, one uh, one generation can be determined by one breath or uh, one generation can be determined by the atmosphere where we are in so it's a very uh, tough question uh, question means it's a very deeply thought question uh, so that's how i feel the generations can be considered but this is not what the tradition says i have to, I have to emphasize this according to tradition uh, anapana is a chittaja rupa i'll i'll discuss about this matter uh, in a in a in a in a lecture Thank you, Pandit. Saru, Saru, Saru. Uh, and in fact, I look forward to that lecture because, in fact, I also have a, a question about this uh, um, Anapanasati. Okay. Because I, I, I read somewhere by one um, Sayadaji, he explained that when we do Anapanasati, we have to keep our mind at the tip of the nose, at the, the upper lip, because at the time, that breathing is still Chitta Jarupa. Mm, mm, mm. Does that mean that it has to be Jita Jarupa in order to be considered Anapanasati? Yeah, that's that's a huge thing. Now, according to the tradition, uh, this breathing is considered as Jita Jarupa. Breathing is considered Jita Jarupa. So it seems like when it now there are two ways. Then now, if I explain it as it is says, now when the air goes in, it becomes Jita Jarupa. Then it's a huge problem in how fundamentally. How a rupa is considered as chitta jarupa? It's a huge problem. So they consider the air outside air is going in, which is a utu jarupa. When it enters the nostrils, it's considered as chitta jarupa. Then, when while it is inside, it is chitta jarupa. When it goes out, it becomes utu jarupa. So, if that is the explanation that we are going to embrace, then definition of chitta jarupa there should be two definitions of chitta jarupa rupas produced by the mind or rupas that are affected by mind for example this process is happening as a as the, but still the mind is existing in our body so when air goes in as a, as a result of this process these rupas are considered chitta ja so that's why it's a it's a it's a it's a very nice topic uh, which gives you lots of insights and also uh, ask us to rethink about the definition of Chitta Jarupa according to the Theravada tradition. Normally, the definition of Chitta Jarupa is Rupa produced by mind. If, if we go into that definition and explain the Anapana as Chitta born, then what happens? Even without air, just by having a mind, we can have breathing. But we know that is not possible. If you take out the air out of this atmosphere we will not be able to breathe and we would end up dying that's for sure because we need that air in the outside and that's why we, we also the tra tradition says uh, the smell travels to our nose through the air so outside air is going in that's obvious but the thing is when that air enters the nostrils since then it is considered chittaja so then what happens it's a way of consideration so then we have two types, it means that we have two types of Chitta de Rupas. Rupas produced by mind, while, which happens while we are working, working and all. And in Anapana, the Utuja Rupas entering into the body is considered as Chitta de Rupas. This is another way of uh, uh, considering. Or the other way is, we just consider uh, Utuja Rupa is the, what is happening in this process, but the expansion of the body expansion of the body is caused by chitta so this 
is another way. Uh, the expansion is while the mind is there, caused by chitta, while the air, utuja air, is coming in and out. So, uh, what I felt was there was no such uh, uh, vigorous argument about this process. Uh, so, we also can look into get some ideas about the ancient knowledge about the breathing when we talk about this lesson. Okay, thank you, Pandi Saru Saru Saru. Yeah, yeah, I, I really look forward to that. Uh, okay, Saru. Yes, and yeah, and this is, there is no more question, but the other thing time is also started. Okay. Okay, Sadhu Sadhu. So, uh, thank you for listening. We'll conclude it today. Uh, so, today we discuss about the Santatis, uh, Kamaja, Chittaja, Utuja, and Ahara Santati. Next week, I shall start the topic of Kamaja Rupas, which will be quite interesting. Uh, there will be a lot of interesting th things to talk to discuss. Things to discuss. So, with this merit, may all of us be able to attain the Nirvana, the liberation, and also. Uh, may the Buddha Sasana sustain with this merit and also we wish uh, for the world to have peace back again uh, without any human suffering. So, Buddha Sasana Chiran Tattu, Buddha Sasana Chiran Tattu, Buddha Sasana Chiran Tattu, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.